I wonder how much thought you've given to your immune system, and in particular, to its extraordinary ability to discriminate, an ability on which our life depends. Because on the one hand, we rely on our immune system to defend us against the myriad range of bacteria, viruses, fungal infections that we encounter through our lives. But on the other hand, we trust our immune system not to turn its weaponry on us. And the fact that the immune system does not attack us usually is remarkable because there's nothing categorically different about our own proteins compared to the proteins made by a bacteria or those encoded by a virus. They're simply strings of amino acids that the immune system is quite capable of recognizing and responding to. The fact that it does not is referred to as self-tolerance. Now, what I'd like to do in the next few minutes is discuss with you the possibility that it might, be, uh, it might become possible to make the immune system tolerant to an organ transplant with the whole myriad of proteins, foreign proteins, that that transplant will display. Of course, normally a transplant provokes a very vigorous immune response, which, if unchecked, uh, would lead to rejection. Now, before going any further, let me briefly digress and introduce myself. Uh, my name is Robert Leckler. I qualified in medicine, uh, and then I specialized in kidney medicine. Um, I then did a PhD in immunology at Imperial College, uh, completed my postgraduate training, and then I went to the National Institutes of Health in the United States to complete my research training. I then researched, returned to the UK and took up a post uh, at the Hammersmith Hospital as a transplant physician, uh, and started to grow a research group at Imperial College focused on transplantation and transplantation immunology. I was fortunate a few years later to be joined by a very talented Italian immunologist from Rome, uh, who later became my wife, who's in the audience, uh, and she now leads the research group that I used to lead, possibly confirming the hypothesis that women tend over time to gain the upper hand. <laughs> so, I would argue that organ transplantation was one of the major successes of modern medicine in the second half of the last century, saving many lives and transforming many more. But there are some problems that limit its success. The first of these is that to prevent the rejection I referred to a moment ago, it's necessary to give to patients immunosuppressive drugs that depress the immune system in a completely blanket manner, leaving the recipient open to a range of infections and to an increased incidence of cancer. Now, when I started my career in transplant medicine, at best, 50% of kidney transplants made it to one year before they were rejected. Today, albeit a few years later, well over 90% of kidney transplants survive for one year. And those improvements in survival are the result of more powerful immunosuppressive drugs. But remember, those drugs depress the immune system in a completely non-discriminatory manner. And to illustrate the problem that that can create, I remember well a transplant patient that I looked after at the Hammersmith, a 45-year-old man. Uh, he'd had his transplant eight years previously. The transplant was working well. And then he appeared at the outpatient's clinic with swollen lymph nodes in his neck and a spiking temperature. He had a lymphoma. It was a lymphoma triggered by a virus. And if left untreated, would have killed him. So the only option we had was to take away the immunosuppressive drugs to release the immune system to attack his cancer, which indeed it did. But inevitably, of course, his unleashed immune system then attacked his transplant. It was rejected. He went back on dialysis. So that's the first problem. The second problem is that when you get past that one-year point, year on year, there's a steady attrition of transplants. They fail over time. So the average length of time that a transplant from a deceased donor lasts is around 12 years. And that attrition is due to a grumbling immune response that the drugs that we use to depress the immune system don't fully eradicate. The third problem is that supply simply doesn't meet demand. And even if all transplantable organs were used, that simply still wouldn't meet demand. I do hope, by the way, you've all signed your organ donor cards. But even if you all had, uh, supply and demand wouldn't match. Now, if we were able to achieve transplant tolerance to persuade the immune system of the recipient to become tolerant to the transplant and accept it as self, 
that would address all three problems because you wouldn't need to give those blanket immunosuppressive drugs with their side effects. The transplants would last longer, and that in turn would impact on the third problem because quite a large number of patients on the waiting list for a kidney have had a previous transplant that failed, and they're back on the list waiting for a second or even a third transplant. Now, you may be wondering, am I entering the realms of fantasy uh, when I talk about the possibility of making an immune a transplant recipient tolerant to the transplant, or are we in the realm of reality? Let me assure you, we are in the realm of reality. And the reason is because over the last, I guess, two decades, we've acquired many insights about how to turn the immune system on and off at will. And that is having an impact in a wide range of medical areas, not least in cancer. Now, if you think about it, the immune responses in cancer and transplantation are the two opposite sides of the same coin. Because in cancer, the problem is that the immune system is inclined to ignore something that we would like it to attack. In transplantation, the immune system is inclined to attack something we would like it to ignore. So understanding how to turn the immune system on and off has transformed cancer because now you can give antibody treatment to cancer patients that takes the brakes off the immune system and releases it to attack the cancer. So a number of cancers that 10 years ago we thought were untreatable are now treatable, and some other cancers are best thought of as long-term conditions. Now, returning to transplantation, as I said, there's overlap between cancer and transplantation immunology. And in the field, a case of transplantation, we now understand rather well how the immune system manages that discrimination that I was referring to earlier, the mechanisms responsible for self-tolerance. And one of the key mechanisms is mediated by a small population of white blood cells called regulatory T cells. Those regulatory T cells have a job, and that is simply to prevent autoimmune disease. Those cells have been found in all individuals of all species that have been studied. And to illustrate their importance, if you engineer a mouse so that they lack this population of regulatory cells, those mice get multiple autoimmune diseases. And most recently, a series of human families have been identified that have a spontaneous mu mutation in a gene that's crucial for the function of those regulatory cells, and the members of those families develop multiple autoimmune diseases. So we posed a very simple question. Might it be possible to isolate those regulatory cells and harness them to induce tolerance to a transplant in a human transplant recipient? So we started uh, in experimental mice, and we isolated these regulatory cells. We expanded them outside the body, and then we infused them back into a mouse at the time that it was given a heart transplant from another mouse strain that it would normally reject. Those regulatory cells prevented rejection, and indeed, the animals became tolerant to the transplant. So to move closer to the clinic, we then used a humanized mouse model. Now, a humanized mouse model involves taking a mouse and genetically engineering it so it has no immune system of its own of any kind, and consequently, it will accept a piece of transplanted tissue from a human without rejection. So we transplanted these immune incompetent mice with pieces of human skin, allowed the skin to heal in, and then a few weeks later, uh, and, and, and then, sorry, I beg your pardon, and then uh, a few weeks later, we infused immune cells from another human being, which would reject the skin, and we tested the ability of regulatory cells to inhibit that rejection. They worked. So that paved the way for early phase trials of using regulatory cells in patients. Now, early phase trials are basically designed to test the safety of a new treatment, not the efficacy. So we took uh, patients who were being transplanted, we isolated their blood, we isolated their regulatory cells, we expanded them into very large numbers in the laboratory under very strict sterile conditions, and then infused them back into the patients a few weeks later. So far, we've treated 12 patients with kidney transplants and nine patients with liver transplants. The trials have gone smoothly, there have been no adverse effects, so the treatment appears safe. And encouragingly, the 12 patients receiving kidney transplants have had no rejection episodes, providing a hint at this stage of efficacy. So this puts us in a really exciting position because now we can move on to use modified regulatory cells, and that is what we plan to do in the next couple of years. The modification will be to target the regulatory cells specifically to the proteins of the transplant. 
Now, I referred earlier to the similarities in some senses between cancer and transplantation. This kind of approach has been used in cancer. The modification in the case of cancer was to take aggressive T cells, aggressor cells, and modify them to target their attention to the cancer by putting in a gene that puts a receptor on the surface that focuses on the tumor. That looks as though it's a workable strategy. And the good thing is that the regulatory authorities have approved this kind of approach in patients. So now we're talking to the regulatory authorities about using this gene targeting effect in regulatory cells to target the regulatory cells specifically to the transplant. So what I've been talking about is the results of a 30-year journey that began for me with my PhD studies I mentioned a moment ago. During my PhD, I unpicked the mechanisms whereby the immune system recognizes transplant proteins as foreign. And the prospect now of persuading the immune system to become tolerant to those proteins is hugely exciting and we hope will create a big step forward in the transplant field and furthermore should give hope to the thousands of patients who are facing failure of an organ that could be treated by transplantation.